Hello everyone and welcome to this recording. I haven't been uh, doing any videos lately, so uh, since I started replaying Sniper Elite 4, I decided I'd give it a go. Um, I started playing the game because I wanted to finish an old project of mine, and that is to map all of the collectibles in the game in all of those missions that you can play. Um, yes, I want to keep it in the editor. So this is basically how the file looks like. And what you see here is a mapping of uh, all of the collectibles based on the player orientation and coordinates uh, while facing them or being near them. The um, logic behind it is to try and take all of these collectibles per mission and create some sort of a teleporter that gets you to each of the collectibles so you can pick them up very easily. Of course, there are situations where, for example, you'll find a collectible on a soldier or on an officer, and if that situation happens, well, the uh, coordinates and orientation will try to get you as close as possible to that particular uh, AI in the game. Just keep in mind that if you start creating ruckus in the mission, well, then you will basically not find the soldier there or the officer there. They will most likely have gone running and hiding, uh, and you'll perhaps need to wait for the mission to calm down the map to calm down and everyone to return to their posts. So having said that, uh, I've played most of the game, actually all of the missions and I mapped everything in here, and I got to including mission number eight which is the last mission in the game, and then I thought well looking at the collectibles list there are several other missions such as compound, rail yard, and then there's target Fuhrer, which is the DLC, and then there's Death Storm, Inception, Infiltration, and Obliteration. Well, while you can play these th last three missions, if you have the DLC or if you have the game downloaded for some some place, uh, and Target Fuhrer as well, well, you cannot play Rail Yard and Compound missions uh, in single player. And that is because, well, looking online, I found that these missions can only be played in Overwatch, which is co um, a cooperative mode. And as you can read here, there's no actual way of getting around it. So the purpose of this video is to show you how to get around it, how to play these missions in single player, how to basically force the game to load the map and to allow you to play the actual missions. Um, before I proceed, I want to, I thought of some things to say, and uh, I want to let you know that, number one, this video just teaches you, or not necessarily teaches you, shows you the process thought of how to get from what you propose to, to be doing to the actual execution of it. It doesn't trade into consideration which executable you're playing with. I'm playing the DirectX 11 version of the game. You might want to play the DirectX 12 and really I don't care. So everything that I'm going to be doing here is about the DirectX 11 version. Now if you're going to ask can you do it for DirectX 12, I'm going to say no. So that's about it. Now whatever happens after you are allowed to play the mission, this is not something that I, I could foresee. So just be grateful that you can play the missions. And don't whine that you cannot be the sniper or the spotter or whatever type of player you can be in those co-op missions. The mission itself requires two players. We're now cheating to allow you to play it in single player. So whatever conditions are unmet, I'm not responsible for that. So if you feel like you wish that you something nicer happened to you and you were able to do something blah blah in game, well, I can help you with that. It's a wish that you'll have to keep with you. Um, if you're not interested in the thought process and whatever I'm going to show here and you think that this is very uh, high level um, or not necessarily high level but very detailed and you require specific skills and blah blah, you can just skip this part and you can go directly to Fearless Revolution Forums, the table section, you can find there Sniper Elite 4. I will update the table and post it in a few minutes after finishing this video. Well, in a few hours actually, because I also have to take what I'm going to show here. I haven't 
really gotten to a conclusion. So I just tested it. I saw that it worked. And then, well, I will turn all of this conversation into a script that you can just enable and be done with it. So if you don't care about the mechanics, thought process, the execution, blah, blah, and, or whatever I'm going to talk about here, just skip or just close this video and just go to Fearless Revolution Forums table section and get your table from there. Now, back to, well, <laughs> closing the parentheses. Uh, so, these two missions can only be played in cooperative mode. All right. Now, another thing that you might have known about Sniper Elite 4 is that it uses um, a DRM uh, protection, which is called the Nouveau. And this Nouveau fella has some anti-cheat features, one of which is what you're about to be seeing now. So if I open Cheat Engine, which is the tool that we're going to be using to actually pull the table, so this is going to be the table that you'll be finding on Fearless Revolution Forum's table section. You open it in Cheat Engine, just make sure that you have version 7.0, so download the latest one, uninstall the, the previous ones that you have there. Uh, it's always best to have the latest version around with you. And now, if I'm trying to open the game uh, here, you'll see something like this. Click play. This game is incompatible with Cheat Engine. That's a pure ludicrous crap, load of crap. It's not incompatible with Cheat Engine. That's a way of saying, just to put it there for the customer. Um, so this is what's what's going to happen when you have Cheat Engine open and you try to, to load Snapper Elite 4. Now, there are several solutions to this. One of the solutions is to unsign your Cheat Engine. The other solution is to work with some Windows APIs that basically bypass uh, this anti-cheat check, which is basically verifying the certificate of the actual cheat engine process. So that's why unsigning basically bypasses cheat engine. It removes the certificate, therefore the Nuvo doesn't find any certificate, so it doesn't consider cheat engine as a threat. Yeah, it looks for a specific certificate, the one that is the one that corresponds to cheat engine. You can see that the file is signed. Um, <clears throat> and another method is something that I've read about or seen about in a video um, on YouTube. I think it's created by Sneaky Mofo or Disassembler, or I don't remember exactly all of those nicknames of his. Hello. Um, and this method relies on basically killing one of the threads that has um, a certain priority mode. And in order to do the to do the killing, you basically attach to the game after the game has been run, and then you kill the thread with x64dbg. You need a debugger for that. Now, a very cool fella here on Guided Hacking forums, he created and also provided the source code for his tool. He created a tool. It's a console application, which basically waits for the game to begin, and then identifies that particular thread with the, the type of priority it looks for, or actually identifies all of the threads with the given priority, and then kills all of them. <clears throat> so let's see what happens when we actually run Sniper Elite 4 with this open. So you need to click on play, and then you'll see that this happens. You can now open Cheat Engine. So those threads were killed. You can also close this one if you don't necessarily need it. Let's close it and then let's open Cheat Engine. As you can see, we have no, no more issues going on forward. Now I can open the game process. Then, because the table is found in the My Tables folder, it will automatically be asked to be loaded. And then I can do whatever I want with this table for the game. Unlimited ammo, blah, blah, blah. Just note that through the options you don't have God Mode. I consider that it's useless to, to have God Mode given all of the other aspects like unlimited 
magazine items, unlimited clip ammo, um, super accuracy, no recoil, and so on and so forth. I, however, added some extensive functionality, such as this location, coordinates. This is basically what I use, the full array, to copy the information and paste it here. The full array basically gives you 32 bytes comprised of orientation, which is made out of, uh, I think, three floats. And then you have your, your coordinates made out of three more floats, so three, six, 24 bytes, and there's, yeah, well, the coordinates have actually four, four sets of uh, four bytes, because the last one is zero. It's always a zero, as you can see from, yeah, so the first three, three sets of uh, four bytes, these are the orientation of the player. Then, well, the, the first four, actually. And then the next, so half of it is the orientation. The other half is the actual player coordinates. So what happens when you, let me just load a map, just so you can see. So I'm going to copy this, copy. I'm going to go single player, uh, slug mission, and then I'm going to play Sansolini, and continue. And start game. And for the sake of the argument, I'm going to see, I'm going to check no. if the, come on man, I'm going to check if the invisibility, the perfect stealth script still works. All right, disable sound detection, disable cone, disable entity state updating. Anyway, so the script does work. Now, as you can see, when we're in the actual map, you see here a full ray. Like I said, the first half of it, the first half of it, so the last four zeros here, is the orientation. The other half of it is the actual player coordinates. You can also see the player coordinates in float values, which is useful. Anyway, now we want to go to the location of where we would find letters from home, stupid British, stupid Lancasters, right? So what we do is we copy this. We paste it here, and if you take a look in the background while I press OK, you'll see the player teleport. There we go. So normally here on this table, you would find a document that you can pick up. And the document is basically this. Letters from home, stupid British, stupid Lancasters. Now, considering we are hidden, let me show you what I meant with on soldier. So I'm going to take this array and I'm going to teleport myself to the location around which we would find the soldier that has this last letter. All right, so we're here. As you can see, the soldier is not necessarily around here and that is because he's walking around the pier. Some of the soldiers have fixed positions, others don't. So let's see. Oh, interesting. I cannot use the binoculars. And that is because, well, I didn't... Yeah. I didn't um, pass the tutorial part of this mission. If you remember, starting this mission up, you have a tutorial. And afterwards, you get access to all of the functionalities within Sniper Elite 4. And right now when I press B, I cannot actually do anything about it. So I think this is the soldier that has the letter. So what you can do... Oh, stealth kill. Nice. You can do at least that. All right, so... Well, I don't see any hand symbol above him to pick stuff up. Anyway. The idea of teleporting is to put you as close as possible to the AI, the officer or the soldier that has that particular item. Nothing personal. Yeah, so those symbols don't really appear. Because I didn't... I think it's because I didn't get past the tutorial. Alright. 
it's nice that these folk don't actually react. Oh yeah, I, I remember now, it's this guy. The one that doesn't have a, a helmet on. Or perhaps this is a driver. Yeah, one of these two guys that don't have a helmet have that pretty cool letter. But anyway, I digress. So, once I finish, uh, once I complete this full file, I'm going to create a teleporter script that allows you to... What? All right, there we go. That allows you to teleport to these locations and collect and pick up the collectibles very easily, so you don't have to follow any YouTube videos or whatever. Now, uh, having started doing this, I ended up finishing the game once more, and then I wanted to play the compound and the rail yard missions. Now, you won't find these missions anywhere in the game, so end game. Go to main menu. Uh, you can play the missions as maps only if you do multiplayer, uh, create game, and then set it to whatever here. And then just pick the maps here compound and rail yard. Now, let me show you how it looks like. Um, blah blah blah. Start game. Alright, so once the map loads, this is the actual deathmatch version of that map. They are placed here, the map is empty, you don't have any players around, and of course you cannot play it as a mission, whereas you will find collectibles, you will have AIs around you. Right now the map is empty, maybe in Sniper Elite 5 Rebellion will perhaps provide some bots, or actual the actual enemies, if you don't have any friends to play with. I know the idea of uh, co-op in Overwatch mode is nice and appealing, but the fact that you cannot play this game as a single-player map is annoying. You have access to the maps, you can pick up the collectibles, but you cannot play the mission unless you do it in cooperative mode. Right, so this is basically the map. Now, we want to play this map in single-player as if it were a mission. So. End game. Back to the lobby. All right, and leave game. Back to main menu. Now, the first thing I thought about when trying to resolve this situation, as in allowing, let me show. You. So cooperative, create game, not campaign, but Overwatch. This is the mode that you have to select. You have only two maps: compound and rail yard. Uh, I set it to private, I don't, didn't give it a name, and then create private game. Now once you get back here in the lobby, you can see yourself, your name up top here, and then normally another player that joins would appear here. Once you click ready, and the other player clicks ready, then the start game button should activate, and you can start the mission, and you can play it with your buddy. Now considering this is a private game, I, tried, I also tried quick match and I couldn't find anyone willing to, to play with me. Basically, uh, Quick Match tries to search the Steam server or something like that for a player that would basically be able to play with you. And after a while, like two or three minutes, it defaults and gets back to the screen. And it tells you, yeah, well, you are the host. Steam decided that you are the host. Anyway, I digress again. Um, so, how do we get this button to activate? Imagine this game as being actually an application, a software, right? Like Notepad. You start Notepad, you have a menu like you did, and in that menu you have a but, um, an option called Find, but the option is grayed out. How do you enable it? And that is something that I thought about. How would I be going about it? How would I be... What would I be doing to enable this button? And then I remembered that recently I've created a table and a comprehensive post about the recently released game by Rebellion, which is called Zombie Army 4. And this post is here on Fearless Revolution forums. The name of the engine is called, the name of the engine is Asura. I don't know if they keep internal versioning or, or what not. And similar to Zombie Army 4, 
you will have access to a console if you press the tilde key. So here, if you press the tilde key, you see this. So the first thing I thought about after explaining in the actual Zombie Army 4, how you can get the list of available commands, how you can patch uh, the internals just to allow you to see all of the commands available, not just those that were disabled. Here you can see a few of them. So a few commands, list CMDs, list var vars, a few variables, but if you do some patching, you will see a ton more. Now in here, considering the engine is a Sura and it's the same engine being used in Sniper Elite 4, I thought, why not look through some possible commands? Then of course I would have to go back to Sniper Elite 4, I would have to um, do the same steps similar similar steps that I've done here for Zombie Army 4, of course, the executables are not identical, so the locations are not identical, and so on and so forth. So I'd have to do some research first and make use of some command that allows skipping the enablement of this button and just going straight into the, to the actual mission. So in here, I posted... Where is it? Here. Post a list of commands and a list of variables. I clicked here on the list of commands, then I did C original, and then I went here, and then I turned it into raw. So what I did next was to look for start, right? And then I see that I have 31 matches. <clears throat> the first one that basically popped in my face was this one, core start game. I'm assuming that this console command, once run, and if available, of course, so I have to enable it first, core star game will just start the map. So what I did next was to go into x64dbg, attach it to the game, sniper elite 4, and then go to symbols. Normally you would do following this assembler, but you'll see that if you follow it in this assembler, the memory is empty. And that is because the first section in the file is not the one that's executable. I mean, it is executable, but because the Nuvo um, moved the code to its own section, well, it's not in the first section anymore. So symbols, follow it in map, you see it here. And this is basically the section that you would want to, come on, man to open up this one. So what I did next was to search for current current module string references. It will take a bit. I'll see a big list filling up. And what I looked for was core start game. Actually, I went about finding something else and I saw that, for example, this is another function, another command front-end lobby has enough players to start. So I said to myself, why not take this, right? Copy it, go back in here, let this one finish, <clears throat> and then just look for it. Of course, we will not be able to run it manually in the console because this is what's going to happen. So if I take this, go back in game, put in the console, I press enter, and you'll see this, invalid command or variable, blah, blah. And that is because, like I said, these are uh, the ex console execution function is not patched to allow restricted commands or variables to run. So it'll take a bit of patching. It's very easily doable. Like I said, I'm trying to see if the actual engine is using this function right now when we are in this lobby. As I'm thinking, if the engine says, does it have enough player to start the game, then it will enable the start game button, right? So it's a condition. Now let's see. What I did was to paste it here. I found, found a reference for it, follow it in this assembler. Now this is where things are going to get a bit tricky because, well, some of you may not have the assembly or debugging or whatever experience and you'll probably it will be spaghetti for you but what you need to understand is near this string two lines above it there is a reference to the actual function 
the actual assembly function of what front end lobby has enough players players to start represents. So if you hover the mouse over it, you see the function itself is displayed. So right click, follow this assembler constant. So this is the function, right? Now when you press F2 in the debugger in X64 DBG, you will see that the actual game breaks, which means this function is currently running. The game is using it to determine whether or not it has enough players to start. So this is where the fun began. I started tracing this function just to see what it would happen if I change some internals of it. The first thing that I noticed while tracing with F8 key was here it reads a value. The value is 2. It reads it from the address stored in R9 plus offset 49. So I said, how many players are required, right? I took this R9, the address, copy it, and then I used cheat engine. 49, as you can see, it says byte, so byte. And then I resumed the game, and what I did next was to change it from 2 to 1. Let's see what happens when I change it to 1. So I go back in here and I don't see any other... Let me show you real quick. So making it 2, this happens. You see <clears throat> the list here, you see the button in line friends, making it 1 removes it because there is a check. And then you see something around here. I don't know what happens if you set it to 3. Well, so the check is if it's more than 1, then display this graphical user interface element. Otherwise, don't. But as you can see, changing it from 2 to 1 doesn't enable the start game button. This is what we want. So I'll leave it back to 2. And then let's go back to the function. So here it reads a value 2. Then down below here it reads another value, which it puts in EBX. This value is 1. It's stored at the same address, but the offset being 8C. So copy this, paste it, just did it, and then change this to 8C. All right, so it says 1. All right, resume the game. And let's see if changing this to 2 just to match the number of required players. This is how I got to the conclusion that this is what this means and this is what this means. So now, changing this to two. Oh, interesting. So, I have another player down here. Creating the list. Level zero. Private level one, actually. I don't know if this is a bot or a default value. I think the engine has some default. If the player leaves the game or whatever, it will fill some bogus information here. But as you can see, the button start game is available. All right. So I said to myself, well, I fixed it. Let's try and play the Overwatch mission, right? So click start game. And of course, now the debugger breaks. I'm just going to disable these breakpoints and I'm going to re enable them later just to explain why. All right. So starting game. And starting game and starting game. So we're basically in a loop now. So we tricked the game into thinking that there are enough players to, to actually start the game, but as you can see nothing happens. So in a little while, in like one minute or so, you'll see that the starting game... Uh, I don't know what this is called. Window or whatever. Alright. All right, all right, so the game didn't actually start. It went back to the lobby, and that is because, well, probably it couldn't sync up the other fake player that we just created. So uh, I thought then, well, if I can't do it like this, then I have two, two options. The first option is to go back to square zero and use core start game command but that would mean patching the actual engine. If you remember, it was up top here. So core start game, I'm assuming it will automatically go into the game. 
And how I know that is if I take core start game and I'll look it up in the references, and we'll find it here, follow in this assembler, and then follow the function, and you'll see that there's a reference here. It says starts a single player game from the front end. So it will basically not do any other checks, I'm assuming, and just go into the actual map. Then I scroll a bit further down and I saw this. There is another function that says starts a single player game from the front end using the given level name. So maybe in the console you can run this. I don't know if it's available. Start game. Okay. Start game, start game. Can start game. Request start game. Hmm. Uh, level maybe? Load level. Can all players load level? Load. Hmm. Mission. Start mission. Start. Oh yeah. SE game state start mission. All right. Uh, start game. Anyway, so there is an actual function. I just have to figure out which function this is that basically allows you to start a game by specifying the level that you want to load. So this is square zero, basically trying to run this function, which forcefully gets you into the game. The other option that I had was to debug even further what happens when you click the start button. And that's why you saw, uh, you saw x64dbg break several times. And that is because those breakpoints that I set there were inside the actual execution uh, of pressing the start button or the start game button. So I'm going to put the breakpoints back. And actually what I did first, so if I'm going to explain the thought process, I might as well just do it properly. So I went into multiplayer and then I chose create game, then deathmatch compound, blah, blah, create private game, went to this lobby, apply the same logic. As you can see, the lobby is identical, but you already have the start button available for you, right? So what I did next was to go into x64dbg, into the actual, uh, come on, here. So start game, start game, start, actually. Mm -hmm. Up top, no. Mm, 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 mm. Two, three. This one has enough players to start, right? So we take this one, and then we put it here. We find the reference, follow this assembler, go to the function. Uh, follow this assembler constant. I put a break here, and as you can see, the game breaks. So what I did next was to try and follow trace this, checking how many players are loaded, one, and how many players are required. Oh, how many players not required? This is basically maximum number of players. And that is because C is value 12. So a maximum of 12 players, only one is loaded in the lobby. And then I saw here that the result in EAX of this function is one. Then you see the comparison, EBX, EAX one, and then there are some conditionals happening. So this function returns one in the sense that it has enough players to start. That's why the start button is active. What I did next, was to go back to <clears throat> the cooperative mode, create game, uh, create private game, and then I faked again this one so the button becomes active. So back to our function, I'm using the min numpad minus to go backwards in time, 
through the tracing process. And then I went here, and then I see this R9 address. Every time you restart, and every time the lobby is recreated, it will allocate memory. Therefore, whatever addresses you used in the past are not available anymore. So you'll have to update this. And then let's change it to two, right? Now you see that you have the start game available for you. So what I wanted next to do is, you see that I, I changed this value to two. Now when you press start game, and you let the, the loop run, once you get back to the lobby, this will be reset to one. So one player. So I wanted to see who actually resets it. Find out what writes. And I'll let Cheat Engine find out for me. So now we're waiting basically for the game to get back to the lobby and we'll see who exactly is writing value 1 instead of the 2 that I changed there. There we go. And this is basically the starting point of my tracing mechanism that I applied further on. So I clicked on this, show this assembler, control G, copy this, go back to x64dbg, right, put a breakpoint here, and then what I wanted to do is to trace, well you saw the breakpoint earlier, to trace from the top to see who is calling this actual function that is basically resetting the number of players. And the reset happens here with this decrement decrease or whatever you want to call it, subtraction function. And I also noticed that when you click here, you have a reference, this arrow tells you who actually is jumping here. It's a G GMP here. Uh, all right, so <clears throat> what we want to do now is fake this again to two, all right? So we can click on the start game, click start game, and let's wait for the game to return to the lobby. So, any moment now, you'll see a break. So I'm, usually, I'm using basically two debuggers, x64dbg and cheat engines. Um, all right, so there is no actual jump from here. That, that's useless. All right, so who calls it? We look in the stack, and we follow keyword in disassembler, and we see that the call is operated here. If you remember when we started, I had a breakpoint here. So, then what I did was to scroll up to find the beginning of this function. As you can see, this piece of code that actually calls the function that resets the lobby, and of course, uh, along with it, the number of players, is part of another function. The function ends here, or here, I don't know where, but at a return, anyway, that's the idea. And if you scroll to the top, you'll see it starts actually here. So what I did next was to press F2 here to set a breakpoint, and then I'll let the lobby reset everything. Now, back to Cheat Engine, change it to 2 again, click Start Game, and then as you click Start Game, you can see that you never get to the loop part. So this is what we wanted. We wanted to be able to debug the game code before the actual starting game loop actually runs. So back in here we see we have a break. And then all of these markings that I put here, as you can see, as you will see, this function is run several times. I'm pressing F9, and as you can see it breaks 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9. So it's being executed constantly. That's why it's called a loop. All right. So I took out the breakpoint from the top, press F9, let it do its thing. So now we have two more additional options. Number one is to make sense of the actual function, what it does, what the code does, where the checks are, 
and how to trick it. All right, we're back to the lobby. Or number two is to take a step back and think a bit about it. Well, you're in a lobby, right? You want the game to start. You want the uh, mission to actually, the map to be loaded and the actual mission to start. If you remember, when we created a multiplayer room, create a game, the same idea, create private game. Now you have a lobby, right? You can have additional players in here anyway, but you have the start game already available for you. So why not go back to here, press numpad minus, it gets you back to the top of the function, press F2 to set the breakpoint. And now let's see what happens here when we press start game on a game that will 100% load the map for you. When you click start game here for this kind of game, multiplayer lobby, deathmatch, you're the, the creator of the game. So you start the, the map and you're the only player in the map. Of course, other players can join or not, but I set it as private. But the important bit is the start game button is available and the map loads. So let's see what goes on in that function, mapping the values, mapping the jumps, what the jumps do, if they jump or not, taking a look at the registers and so on and so forth. So basically what we're doing now is we're trying to determine what happens in that function that lets the game load the map. So start game, x64dbg is breaking. So what I did next was to trace with f8, line by line, and saw here that al is zero, right? And I marked it, double click, AL zero, right? Then F8, and you see that the jump is not taken. It says here, jump is not taken. Not taken means empty. That's the marking that I put here, empty. Run with F8, run this function. Well, I actually enter the function as well. It doesn't do something that is important to us. Move AL, which now is one, into here. So I marked the value of AL here as a comment, F8 again, you can mark this as well, not taken, which means doesn't jump. Then compare this, the value of this address as byte with zero. What's the value of this address? It's zero. So I mark it here as a zero. Continue. Here is the jump taken, not taken. I marked it as such. Then here is you can also do something like this, one. You can see AX is one here. So is the jump taken, not taken, and so on and so forth. Here, what I did was to check what R10 plus HC, this value is, which is one, and then what value is R11? R11 is here, so it's zero. So I marked both of them. Then jump if below or equal, not taken. Continue. Compare RAX plus 7D with zero. It's zero, so I marked it as a zero. Is the jump taken? Not taken. Compare R10 plus 50 with zero. What's its value? It's one. Marked it here. Is the jump taken? Not taken. Is the jump taken? Taken. Continue. And then I saw here that RBX is one, right? So one minus one, sub RBX one, means one minus one, which gives a zero. Therefore, this is not taken, right? Then test DIL, DIL. Is it taken? Not taken. Test R11. Is it taken? It's taken. And this, as you can see, goes past the piece of code, which I put a breakpoint here. If you remember, this was the one that went into the call. And inside this call, if we scroll, we see the lobby reset, right? So what happens now is because of this jump, the game will start. And we exit. And I tried to do the same here to follow the trace. So the value is zero. ECX is zero. So sub ECX one is minus one. And then not taken. Compare ECX with one and then taken. So it skips it now here. 
is it is the jump taken not taken run this call do this comparison this jump and then I took a look at AL which is a zero and of course this is taken anyway so these are some markings that I left basically a trace of what happens within the various lines of assembly code in the function that um, is executed when you click start game button in such a way that now when I try to do the same steps but with the cooperative mission I can trace the same pieces of code and see what's different so the other option that I have is to do a comparison between multiplayer uh, with one player in it which allows me to create a game and cooperative with faked number of players which doesn't start and it ended up in a in a an endless loop as you could have seen now when I press F9 to resume I'll see that this function breaks again so two three four five six seven and after the seventh run we're in the map so the game loads right All right, death match, blah blah blah. Cool, go go go. All right, now let's exit end game. So leave game, and now we want a cooperative one. Create game, private compound blah blah. Create private game. We don't have the star game available, so we need to go back in here. Back to has enough players to start this reference and then break here. So maximum number of players is two. How many players are loaded? One. So we want to fix this. It's in R9. So we take the address, put it back in here, plus 8C. If you remember in the trace, so I'm going to press numeric pad minus. So in the trace, at some point in here, in the function that runs when you click start game there was a check that verified offset 8c here so r10 plus 8c move into ebx so this is uh, current number of players value so 8c is the same offset as ours C. So we fake this to two. Right. Now we have the start game button available. Click on it. And we go in here. So what I did was to trace manual with F8. F8, and then I saw that. Is AL zero? It's zero. So no change here. I deleted it then. Well, let me leave it for future notes. Is the jump taken, not taken, similarly as with multiplayer that match, which allowed you to start the game. So it's not here the check. Is AL1 is 1. Is the jump taken and not taken, similarly with multiplayer that match. Is this value 0, it is 0. Is this jump taken, not taken. Is the X1, yes. Is the jump taken, not taken. And then here, when you take a look, you see that the comparison checks our address from here plus 8c which now contains the value 2 because we faked it and it checks this against r11 which is 0 so this is basically a check to, to say something like is the number of players 0 are there any players that are going to be loaded in the map yes or no then as you can see nt not taken again current number of players 2 there we go and that is put in RBX right we continue and we see here com compare RX plus 7D to 0 it's the same as in the multiplayer deathmatch scenario and then we see here R10 plus 50 compared with 0 values 1 the same not taken the same taken increase 1 and then here is the difference that basically keeps this in a loop so sub rbx1 
1 minus 1 in the previous scenario with multiplayer that match we had one player to be loaded now we faked it to two players there is another check somewhere else in the engine that uh, requires the value to stay at 2 otherwise the map doesn't start so what we want to fake now is this loop not running again so if I press F8 over the RBX RBX becomes 1 and then as you can see here this jump if not equal is taken and we want it to be not taken so you either modify this to 1 instead of 2 to begin with which happens here this is where the move occurs or just change the flag while they're here the zero flag change it to 1 in such a way that the jump is not taken so you'll see not taken taken exit we go here the value is 0 not taken taken not taken 0 taken and the same All right so now when you press F9 you'll get back again in this function so now you know where exactly you want to modify what you want to modify so it's either here so EBX you set it to 1 and then when you get here you'll see that this is not taken anymore right another break set it to on another break read it set it to on another break if you remember the function breaks several times set it to on come on man there we go so what just happened oh overwatch compound is loading hmm let's get to work all right so hey guys I'm playing cooperative in single-player mode with a fake player <laughs> all right so now you have the mission have the map According to the partisan spy, all right let's see if the table well I'm already in stealth mode let's see if it works I'm the host anyway dude all right inventory kill ah hold on um, instant quick search body no recoil no spread disable scope sway disable BPM as you can see it's gone let me clip ammo items and also let's let me show you how you can teleport hey dude hmm all right just press demo come on guys boom 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 the nasty part is I'm not the sniper which means I don't have a sniper weapon. Let's see if I can... Anyway, you can play the mission now. You also have a binocular. You can also tag the fuckers. All right. They can see me because I have that shit. Uh, the only thing you can do, if I remember correctly, is... Oh, here's a sniper. So the only thing you can do is pause the game. As you can see in the background, the game is not because well, it's not supposed to be able to allow you to pause it because you're playing a multiplayer game, cooperative, whatever it's called. So the reason I, yeah, the reason I put perfect stealth on was to be able to not to be killed while testing stuff out. Oh. All right, so, and as you can see, you have service record, collectibles, and you have the compound, and you can collect all of these. Now, let me show you a trick. So, if you now point to the roof of this building, well, let me just use another one like this. Point to this, then press numeric pad zero, and you'll be on top of the building press boom right 
So why not take the high ground if you want to deal with the actual fucking sniper here? Hello. Huh, cool, long shot. Right, so, um, I think that if I carefully point at the ground here, I can also teleport to the sniper. Uh, where was he? I didn't teleport to him, right? Ah, come on, man. Hmm. But I did tag him. Oh, mines. Okay. Point to the rooftop, tele... Okay. So sometimes you don't teleport correctly to the actual roof. You may also teleport inside the building. This did work now. So where was the actual sniper here? Snipey. Well, anyway, as I was saying, now I'm playing the actual map. Hi, dude. Who shot it? Boom. That's all I'm going to find here. Oh, I think I know why you can't play as the sniper. It's because if you remember, in the lobby, end game. Well, you saw the idea. Alright. So here in the lobby it says complete the mission to unlock character select. Ah, damn it. Alright, let, let's try again. Sniper. Ready. Start game. And. So the lobby is not destroyed when you exit the, the actual game, it's only destroyed when you exit the lobby altogether. So let's change this to 1. and redo this. Let's see now if I can play as the sniper. So it's possible that all the bullshit that I said in the beginning of this video, aside from uh, the DirectX 12 binary, which I'm not going to take care about, take care of. Alright, so the game loads, we tricked the engine, now let's see if I'm playing as a sinking, I don't know with what's sinking, but let's see if I can play as a sniper now. Come on, yeah, cool, this is what I wanted. So the other player was somewhere around here when we spawned or something like that. Oh, and I don't have any binoculars. What the hell? So stupid. Fuel is the fastest life. Look, that's the transformer. We overload that. High shot. We'll short out the electricity. Quiet option, but liable to find us in the darkness. Right. So boom. But why don't I have any binoculars? I think I know why. Because the other player is supposed to tag the enemies and then you're supposed to be shooting them, right? At least this is working. Oh, two in a row. So much fun. Right, quite a lot of mayhem. Coming from one guy. A sniper crew terrorizing the locals. Boom. And post. Destroying this would scupper their intelligence gathering. Right. He died. Uh, where was that goddamn sniper? Oh, and the fun part about it is I think I can <laughs> let's see. Am I allowed to get out of the section, or I'm just... Ah, okay. I understand the whole idea. 
All right, so basically in Overwatch, oh no, it actually lets me get down, but not in the map. All right, so in Overwatch, the other player, which is the operative, goes inside the compound, so behind the fences, while you as a sniper just move around the outer circle of the map. So I can teleport here, can do whatever. And I think I can also go inside the Can't compound with my else. teleport skill. <laughs> so as you can see, you cannot go past this barrier here or behind the fence. Or you can. Let's see, this, does this allow you to actually jump? Alright. Uh -huh. No, it doesn't. It has barbed wire. So you can get down. Ah, oh, fuck it. I want to get down. Alright. So now you can also play inside the compound. <laughs> as if you were an operative. But of course, you're using the teleport script that is available in my table. Alright. So, let me try and find a collectible. Well, as you can see, R pickup. So what I basically do when I'm mapping collectibles is I go to the location of this bed here I just move as close as possible so I cannot move anymore facing the actual object right and then I go back to cheat engine and go back to the full array I copy it right and then I go back to this file compound and then I put it here so now for example if I go here and as you can see I'm not facing the bed anymore so I'm facing the exact opposite of the bed right the collect the collectible is facing that way and I'm facing now this way so if I paste this array now copy put it here and press OK you'll see that I'm I will be instantly teleported to that actual collectible facing the collectible. See? And that's what the future script is supposed to be doing. To allow you to collect everything that you haven't collected so far or just iterate through all of the collectible locations in such a way that you can pick up all of them very fast. So you don't have to worry or wonder no I don't have any All right let's just boom it this way come on All right it it didn't work shit why it really has to be stuck to the to the actual wall to to explode God damn it. Alright. Another thing I like to do here in these maps is to basically shoot, lights, interact. Okay. But how do I enter the building? Uh, just through that crack. Or through here. Let's see. Can I go down? Yeah, there are stairs. Hey fuckers. Interesting. What does this button do? Ah. Interact as in... Yeah, so another limitation, as you can see, is if you're teleporting yourself into the, the actual compound... Um... You're basically supposed to be doing actions that only the operative is doing. So you're a sniper, you don't have in your inventory. The hell man. It was supposed to be here, not available available in mode. So you don't have any C4 to attach to walls to explode or whatever. Then you perhaps don't have the skill 
or something like that of the operative to be able to interact with that stuff in the wall. Uh, so I think it's possible that you will not be able to complete it. So you won't be able to finish the mission. You can collect everything that is in there. You can do all of the objectives, if any. But then there is in the debug sections here cheats. All right, so there is this, and I think that if you set it to one, all right, skip mission. What did it do? Uh, got me back to the lobby. All right. So I think I might have to do both of them. <laughs> so I also have to enable the commands. There is a command here that does finish or complete survive 183. Mm. Yeah, there is um, huh? back a function here has complete campaign. Is objective complete? So you can use basically these functions, these console functions, to mark objectives as complete or to finish missions. Finish. It's finishing game. Yeah, there is a there is a command in here. I just have to find it. Maybe it's not named with finish or complete. Complete mission. Not complete. What was it? Skip mission. Mm. Skip. Objective is skipped. Cheat map skip level. I think this was the starting point. All right, so skip level doesn't also complete it. Cutscene skip skipped. Yeah, so I'll have to figure out a way that will allow you to finish the mission, considering the fact that um, there aren't two players that are doing co-op on that mission, either compound or rail yard. So now I see the logic of it. The reason you need two players is one player is dealing with the sniper objectives, and the other player is dealing with the operative objectives inside the compound. So once the sniper objectives are all completed versus the operative objectives all completed, so if A side has all completed and B side has all completed, then the mission ends. So the actual server, which hosts this stuff, is syncing completion of the objectives from sniper with the completion of the objectives from operative and says well mission complete now since you're playing only one part only one of the the two you will never get to finish the objectives of the other side so while you can play the mission you can get all the collectibles you can map the locations and whatnot you will not have it completed but I don't think it matters anyway because it doesn't count towards the, the total in game. So if you want to leave the lobby, if you go to service record, collectibles, you only see the total completion of the collectibles. You can see that for compound and rail yard, these are set to zero. So if you're a collectible freak and you want everything uh, collected and you perhaps like to read um, these letters and the story behind them and so on and so forth or check the 2D roster or whatever, just play the mission. Uh, so you will be happy enough to, to be able to just get this level collectible completion to 100% for two, two missions that normally you can't play in single player. So that's pretty much it. Uh, as I said, long time haven't done any videos so took this opportunity to demonstrate a bit of skill 
So these guys here will be happy to know that, well, if I post <laughs> in this topic, they'll be happy to learn that, well, you can now play those missions in single player. And all of the stuff that I showed in x64dbg is going to be turned into a script. You'll find it available in this table here. The table is going to be then updated to work smoothly, blah, blah, and you'll find it on Fearless Revolution forums, as in here. And I think that's about it. Um, well, leave any comments or just uh, private message me or post in the actual Sniper Elite table topic on Fearless Revolution forums. If you have any comments or maybe if I babbled or said something off or whatever, just know that I'm, I didn't have any script ready, any speech. Um, so this is just simply go with the flow and try to explain as much as possible. I understand that perhaps whatever I did in here in X64DBG is spaghetti to you. But, um, well, for those that are interested, I think this shows how you get, shows the roadmap from thinking what you want to achieve, executing it, uh, applying some common sense logic and getting to the actual result. For the rest of you who are not interested in it, well, you know where you can find the table. So that's about it for today. Thanks for watching. Sun out.